Hello everyone, I'm Gleekles, and today I will be drawing Jacksepticeye. If you don't know who Jacksepticeye is, he is a fantastic gamer on YouTube, and he makes the most hilarious videos, some of the best ones out there. Honestly, I've gotten so addicted to watching his channel. He's one of the first um, actual gaming channels that I've actually gotten into, and he just has a fantastic personality. He's a really nice dude. He promotes you know positivity and good things and fun things and if he's laughing you're laughing it's just ah oh, it's good stuff I love good stuff like that but I drew a picture of him because he and Markiplier and a couple other people are going to Indie Pop Con and I am not able to go but I wanted to draw something anyways to commemorate for him and how awesome he is and my friend is going so hopefully she can give this to him when she goes but I wanted to make a little video from start to finish about my drawing process. Kind of like it might meet the artist video, but this one is a little more in depth. I won't be doing any more um, videos like this because I don't want to um, get repetitious. And so, because I already did a toothless video on how I did watercolors or that specific type of watercolors. If I change and adapt, then I will make a different one. But this was is basically a, my start to finish process on how I make draw, paint, and then do the ending process on a piece. But I chose Jacksepticeye because, I mean, how can you not love this dude? Anyways, I basically start out by putting the general shape of the pose that I wanted him in. Jack is very lively. He has a lot of energy. He's very energetic. And at the end of all of his videos, when he thanks everybody for watching, he points into the air. So I kind of incorporated that into his pose. But I wanted him to be, you know, action-esque, like popping out, making the pose with all the energy he has going on. So I just put the general shape of what I wanted and then I'm gonna go in and block in the details. When I start drawing, I begin everything with shapes. That's just how my mind works and it breaks everything down way easier for me. Everybody draws different, but that's just how I do it. It makes things easier for me if I can just get a general layout of where everything is and then basically when the general shape is already there, then I can go in and refine the details and it just makes, I don't know, that's just how I prefer to do it. And if you know, you're a simple thinker like me or you want to give it a shot by doing it that way, then I highly recommend you try breaking everything down into shapes first and seeing how it goes for you. But then after I get the general shape, as you can see, I go in and I refine the details of his jeans and his sneakers. And please excuse my face and my hair. I am one of those people who has to stick my face all up in my piece and get really close. Um, it's a case of bad posture and I'm also nearsighted even though I have contacts and I just can't really see well unless something is like right in front of my face. Um, that's my excuse. That's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But uh, please excuse me, um, I'm trying to get a better camera set up and you know, avoid these kind of things. But this is what I have to work with right now. I started with his body first, which is really weird. Normally I do the face and then I work my way into the body, which is probably a better idea. But I think I was so concentrated on getting his pose correct and getting a right pose going down that I worked on that last. And it worked okay for this. But when I do a face, I get the general head shape and then I lightly mark in where I'm gonna put the eyes, nose, mouth, ears. And then I'm making a circle for Sam, his septic eye. He's so cute, I love Sam. And Sam's gonna be in there, squiggle squaggling along. But as you can see, especially with what I did with Sam, Sam's really simple, he's just a circle. And everything is just basic shapes and then the details. And then I constantly have to sharpen my pencil because Prismacolor, Colorase Color pencils are freaking awesome, but they do, I like working with a really thin edge and just they require a lot of, you know, if you don't want it to your, your pencil line, to, if you want it to taper and you don't want it to be too thick, you're gonna have to sharpen it a lot. I'm sketching using green, which is not normally a good base to use because, you know, obviously one of the benefits of the Colorace colored pencils and why I use it for watercolors or why a lot of people use it for Copics is the color shows through with a texture and um, it blends really well. And obviously I'm drawing a person and green is not a natural color that would go with a skin tone or really anything. Um, pertaining to a human figure. But green is one of the main color palettes because Jack's logo and his banner and everything is green and blue. 
and as well as Sam, so that's why I chose that. So it ended up working out okay. Um, it's not something that I would recommend if you're not going to deal with a theme in which the green is your main color. If you notice, I didn't use like a dark green, I use a really light green, and I actually don't make it very dark at all. I lighten it up and then I will go over it with different colored pencils. But you can see the green shine through and it does look okay simply because that is Jack's color palette is the green and the blue. But I'm going in with and refining the hands just like I did everything else. And you'll see that I will use, um, I'll eventually to get a better reference for his hand, I'll use my own hand. I highly recommend if you're having problems with hands or whatever it is you're drawing, faces, mouth, use, see I'm using my own hand for reference right there. Use a reference, there's no shame in a reference. You absolutely should be using a reference. Like you can't be expected to pull everything from memory at all there's I used to be like ashamed to use a reference and then I'm like that's so silly you need to you need to use a reference so you know what something's gonna look like I take pictures of myself or anybody else I can snag whenever it's possible so I can get a reference down but then I go and I refine the sketch for his hands everything else I added a little comic pop kazam background to go behind him just to emphasize you know the energy and emotion that's going along with the piece now I'm gonna go in with my watercolors and I'm gonna lay in um, light washes. I work from light to dark, which means I pick the lightest color that I'm gonna use in my palette first. And I will do that first and then, you know, it's pretty much exactly what it is. You work from light to dark. Normally I would start with the skin tone first as that is normally the lightest color um, for Jack's complexion because he's very light and pale like I am. <laughs> We're in the pale club, that's okay. We're, you know. That, that there's nothing wrong with having pale skin. I've accepted my pale skin and it's beautiful and I would rather not have skin cancer and yet. Anyways, moving on, he is in front of the yellow background. So if I were to accidentally, which I'm sure I did, get some yellow into the skin area or anything else that's gonna go on top, I haven't laid down the skin tone yet. So that's okay. So the reason why the yellow goes on first is essentially so I can paint over it. So you have to sort of, when you're painting, break that down. Um, and the more you paint, the more you'll, you know, just it'll just come naturally to you. Like, oh, okay, well clearly this is the background, so it's gonna be behind everything. So that's gonna be put down first. So in case it gets on top of anything that isn't, you know, part of the background or is needs to be in front of it, that's okay because you can paint right back over it. So, yeah, use the yellow because yellow ties into green and blue as like a light, like they complement and they, you know, obviously, kabam, it pops out. And it's a typical color of the little explodey bubble thing that I used to go behind him. Energy, flow, motion, action, kapow. Um, I'm actually gonna go in next with, um, what am I gonna do? Oh, actually, I'm gonna stick my shoulder in front of the video camera to switch my Pandora station. And I probably will do that a couple times. I apologize thoroughly. I'm new to this editing business and I'm trying to find a happy medium with a camera setup that is that works well for you guys. Right now I'm mixing a skin tone. You'll see that I'm going to test it out on a little tester strip that I have beside me. You always wanna have a, a strip of paper that is you know, equal to whatever it is you're using. I'm not, I don't have a strip of the sketchbook paper next to me. I have a strip of um, Bristol board vellum, but it's more or less the same thing. So you wanna test before, oh, just change my station again. Never you mind my neck and shoulder and anything else that's going on. And my back and uh, my shirt, uh, cool. Isn't that why you came here? No. I'm testing, I'm gonna test before I lay my hand back on top of my painting to paint, make sure that it's dry. That's one thing, ugh, with watercolors, sometimes you know you get all into it and you forget. I know I do this with inking too, I'm sure everybody does. You always wanna make sure while you're working on your piece that you make sure and test it with your hands or a piece of paper if it's dry first, because you don't wanna lay your hand on anything that's wet or anything that's going on and ruin all of your hard work. I know that's like a problem that everybody just, oh, it happens and you forget, you get into your stuff and you forget what's going on and smush. 
But as I was saying with the tester strip, I'm constantly going to refer to that. And what's cool is if you're gonna lay another color on top and you already put the strip of um, color that you put on your piece already, you can lay constantly layer over there and see how things are gonna work out before you put it on your piece. It's exceptionally helpful if you're someone like me who doesn't do color studies like I'm supposed to. See, I didn't do a color study because I'm lazy, you guys, I'm bad. Learn from me. Do not do what I'm doing. You see how I have no color study? Do the color study. But if you don't, even if you do have a color study, you still want to have a test strip to the side to double check always because there's nothing worse than, you know, thinking that a color is going to come out one way and then it doesn't and then that's it. All your hard work is kaput. I'm carrying over the same blue that goes into Jack's eyes, into Sam's eyes. Obviously because, you know, Sam is an extension of Jack and Jack's eyes are blue. Um, I'm also going to make a light wash of blue all over Sam. Even though Sam is green, what's cool about watercolors is building layers and having layers of color shine through each other. That's one thing that I really appreciate along with the texture. So that blue that I laid down is going to meld with whatever green that I put on top and create a color and it just they're going to work off each other and it's going to look great. Um, I'm taking the same blue and putting it on Jack's jeans and that's one other cool thing about watercolors you see that I accidentally pulled too much pigment that hadn't had enough water added to it and I put it on there but instead of it messing it up if I just added more water I spread it out. I will be making a little video on watercolor tips and tricks um, just little things like that so turning like mistakes into happy accidents or you know little things to help you out in case you think you mess up watercolor can be more forgiving than people think it is it's actually very chill once again testing making sure that it is dry and then I'm gonna take a light pinkish purple for the skin tone once again pale skin it's really difficult to you know you want to color it and obviously show that somebody has color but then you don't want to make them too dark you want to go in and basically just, I'm just going in and flushing out a little bit of the shadows. I don't want it to be too, too dark, especially not in the face. But pink, obviously everyone has blood in their system, so that's basically showing a light flush of blood under the skin. And I think it's a little bit of the same pink that I will be using in his sweater. Because wherever you can, you want to pull colors from throughout your entire piece to unify everything because then everything looks complete and it's not going to just be like oh this was completely random and just have a whole slew of colors that don't belong together that's no good at all but there's you know everybody has their different way of painting and that's just one of mine I like using most of the time I like using a really limited color palette that's another trick right there see it looked like I think what happened was his face ended up looking too red so what I did was I laid down a little bit of water and I just used my um, paper towel and I lifted the paint right back up because it hasn't been drawn yet. So no harm done. I'm using the same pinkish red and I think I added a little bit of the brown or a darker color to use his sweater. And I'm going to pull that into other places as well. I think I put it in his shoes to just unify it some more. I think I've seen him in a red sweater before. If not, now he has one, yay. And yep, just going in and laying down the flats. You know, this is just a stage that, you know, most paint has to go through. You have to lay down your flat colors, get the base going. You don't want to go in too dark, or at least I don't ever wanna go in too dark, you know, just in case everybody needs the lightest light. And then I think I'm gonna go in with the green for Sam finally, and you'll see the first little bit of build and I'm going back over the body, and you see how the blue kind of it counteracts with the green that I'm laying down to make a really cool color. And it just sheens through and creates a really nice layer, how watercolor does, and I just think that's so awesome. But I think this is basically the flat. And then normally you would have to, once you're done, um, I think I'm gonna go back over the jeans one more time. Because the blue I have, blue pigment in his eyes, the blue blue pigment, unfortunately, in watercolors, I don't know if it's this way, and I forget if it's this way with like oil or acrylics, but it's really finicky. The pigment doesn't like to stay. It's not a bright blue that everybody normally likes to achieve. It's typically, it turns like gray, or it turns 
it just it's gray or it's just too dark it's not bright and nice so I refer to my travel Grimbacher watercolor palette and I easily mix that with my other Utrecht watercolors you always want to make sure that colors are gonna blend well before you just start painting with them because sometimes pigments don't agree well I don't know why but always make sure you test that out before doing that I'm also gonna carry the blue lightly from his jeans over into the white part of his converse. I know that the converse obviously are not blue um, in the white area, but you never wanna make anything that's white completely white, same in the same regard that you never wanna make anything that's black completely black. Um, even if you don't show value with color, um, then you still don't ever wanna do that. I show value with color, meaning like I, you know, I shade, I show dark and light and I use color to show that. I don't go in with black and do that. You never wanna just go in with black deliberately because then things just look, I mean, you can, but I don't know. I don't, I personally do not prefer to do it that way. In natural, in the natural, in the real world, there is no, you know, black isn't making anything light or dark. You know what I mean? Like when the sun comes out, the shadow on your face, there's no black on your face. <laughs> it's, it's just the darker color of your skin. So typically you wanna keep that in mind. I'm going back in with another layer to make those colors pop a little bit. And because I'm not going for a very pastel look with this, I want it to be bright and luminescent and colorful. So sometimes with watercolors, when you do light washes like that, you need to go in for a second thing. Okay, this is the next day I lost sunlight um, for my lighting source, so I had to record again. So the setup is a little bit different. You do get to see a wonderful shot of my shoulder. Uh, it's a very nice shoulder, if I do say so myself. I apologize for this. Um, I have not the best setup in the world. I was traveling when I made this video, but uh, I try to get the same angle as I did before. And I think I will eventually move out of the way. Just please excuse me for that. But I'm going back in and darkening up any shadow areas just like I begin my piece by starting with shapes I will go in and make darker points of the piece I build it with shapes I'm also gonna pop the yellow once more because it now that I see my piece as it darkens the yellow that was once really bright is disappearing so that's another thing with watercolors what you see is what you get and you can just build and build your colors and build your layers and it just grows from there. So that's one benefit of working light to dark. So you, you can just continue to build. But if you go from dark to light, if you've already laid down a dark color, you can't work backwards from that. The dark is already there and you'll muddy up your piece. I think I just add in a little, very little smidge of orange um, to give the yellow some life. So it's not just so, you know, you know, lemonade color I guess it's more like comic booky that you would see the kapow kachow sign but yeah I go back in over that to give it a little bit more life and it's okay because it's lighter than all the other colors that we've used you'll notice that I turn my piece as I work on it to face me so the strokes that I make except right here because <laughs> I don't want to um, touch any of the other parts that are already wet the strokes you typically want to make the strokes towards yourself i find that to be easier it was recommended to me by board ink or another artist to do it and i've been doing it that way ever since and it is way easier it may seem like common sense but silly me wasn't doing that before and yeah so we're just filling that in la 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 the little kapowies and now i'm gonna go in i think and i think i added the yellow a little bit of that yellow to Sam to once again unify it. And because Sam is all septic, you know, you don't want things to be just one tone. Nothing is just one, one solid color. You can if that's your style, but for this style, I wanted to, there to be like a wash of texture and colors. So that's why Sam is made up of a couple of different things. Once again, referring to my other travel case for that blue, because that is a better blue, I'm gonna go back in and I actually mixed the green from Sam and with a darker blue for his jeans. So we get a darker blue for the shadow in his jeans and it's part of the green that's from Sam. So once again, we have unification, synergy. You don't have to do this per se. I just find that it helps to, I know I said this a million times, I find it helps to unify the piece. 
it makes everything look like it belongs together like it's not all separate shapes it makes it look like one steady piece that belongs and it doesn't you know look like you just cut up a bunch of pictures and put it together you want typically want things to unify together to look nice if you don't that's your preference this is mine I go in with a little bit of a purpley you know color that's not quite pink and not quite blue it's more warm kind of like the red or flush that you see in your skin tone and I'm using that to be the darkest dark on the face and skin color I actually think that I choose that purpley tone to be the darkest dark throughout the whole piece I go back in I put it over his hat and I think I use that whole thing to actually help unify the piece I use a brown to go in for his beard and his hair choo 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 Tip, 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 tip. Little baby things. I'm sitting there spectating, seeing what I'm going to do next. You know, don't mind me. I sit and I figure things out before I do them. But yeah, I made the decision to carry that purple out. Um, it worked well for the skin tone, the darkest color in the skin tone, and it was appropriate to put it in other areas of the drawing. So me sticking that purple over the sweater and over the skin and over the jeans and everything else, it's fine. Once again, as you may not be surprised to find, I'm doing this for unification of the piece and to find a darkest dark. Um, I think I put the purple on Sam as well. I think so because it's appropriate. If this is, I'm not saying do this with like colors that don't belong. Like if there's like a hot pink and it is not going to work out, you wouldn't do that there. You're just basically taking colors that are appropriate, so the purple is appropriate because it's going to make a dark, fleshy tone. And that's why it works everywhere else, because the purple is complementary to the other colors. And then I'm going in for Sam and adding in the little ch -ch deceptive bubblies and the veins and the gritty grits. And then I think I went and put in more darkness for Jack right there. Please excuse me and my shoulder and my bra strap. That's so inappropriate. So unprofessional. So unprofessional and scandalous. I went and took the greens and it reminded me, I'm like, oh, there should be like bubbles and slurp, blurp, 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 blurps from like septic eye being in a, a septic eye being in a Sam. Sam being in a septic tank. And I was like, oh, she, sh he, she, it should have like bubbles and stuff like that. And then I really liked that effect. And I'm like, you know what? I want to make Jack pop more too. So I took that little effect that I did with the bubbles and I made like a little textured effect um, to kind of outline wherever Jack was, but only on the little comic explosive behind him. So it wouldn't be too much overpowering. So in this way, him and Sam are kind of unified because they both have that little bubbly effect and it's just more to make him pop and because I enjoy texture. I One of the reasons why I love working with watercolors is because I like building colors and I like building texture. And yes, you can absolutely say this is just an excuse for me to use more texture. I will not argue with you because yeah, yeah I like texture and this is, this is what I'm doing. And that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> you know, <coughs> everyone's got their, <coughs> pardon me, their thing that they enjoy. And texture just happens to be one of mine. But I wanted to really make it blurp, blurp, blurpy. Blurp. <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a term for that, so I'm using sound effects. And you know, sound effects help you paint or draw or, you know, Get whatever you have going on work it's it's a proven fact I have it on good authority that making sound effects makes everything better don't question me just do it just next time you know you're doing something saying what you're doing or make sound effects for it and I guarantee you that it'll make everything better will people stop and stare at you maybe but who cares you know who cares <laughs> I'm just going back over and making another layer with that because um, one thing with watercolors is it looks, the pigment looks way brighter while it's wet, but it'll probably dry a little bit lighter than what you see. That's also what the test strip is for. 
but it's kind of like the opposite to acrylics, to where acrylics usually come out um, drying way darker than what they appear to be, which is deceiving and why I don't really prefer to paint with acrylics. I went and put the little script for dotty dots behind Sam 2 to unify Sam and Jack together. And now once that dried, I take a colored pencil, the, the same exact Prismacolor Coal Erase pencils, but appropriate colors, and I go back over lightly and I pop out the darkest darks and I do my outlines. Now, with this, you can usually pick um, a dark color that fits with the palette to unify the piece. and outline the entire piece with this. For this, I chose a, a couple of colors just because I wanted to keep everything colorful and I didn't, you know, I really, I was testing it out. I wanted to, you know, make an appropriate color for the appropriate section of the piece. So for his jeans, I use a dark blue and then I believe I use the same blue to go over the shoes. And then for him and his sweat her, his sweat her, his, his sweat her, his sweater, I use a like a Tuscan red, so it's like it's not brown and it's not quite red, but it's a flattering darkest dark for a skin tone in what would be the sweater. And then I believe I use the same blue to go back over for Sam, and then if you want, you can hit it with, very lightly with a black or anything else that, you know, would be a darker dark for the appropriate color and I'm just gonna sharpen casually because uh, I like to get a really fine tip with all of my pieces I don't like eventually you'll notice like as you go along you won't be able to taper your lines um, I like to have control over that as much as possible I like working with really thin lines which may sound silly because I have really messy sketches and I'll have different thick to thin lines <laughs> so I don't know I guess that doesn't make any sense but yeah I'm just redefining everything and every once in a while I may um throw in a darkest dark and like try and do a little bit of shading and then smudge it with my finger you can smudge them with your finger I would recommend not being lazy like me and um <laughs> using a q-tip or like a little scrap tissue paper, but you know, we're talking about the girl who won't even do a color test, or why would I reach for a Q-tip? That's nonsense, absolute nonsense. So yeah, and I think that's gonna finish that out for the blue, and then I'm gonna switch over to that brown right there. And then I'm gonna pull that in and outline the sweater and the rest of Jack's skin tone with it, because that's what matches. And I will um, do a little bit more shading on him, and then I will smudge that with my finger right there. You'll see in just a second. But don't do that, kids. Do it. I think I was actually right here. I'm actually looking for a Q-tip. And then I... <laughs> it's funny reliving this. And I say, screw it. <laughs> and then I just smudge it with my finger. So I tried. I tried to not be lazy, but, you know, I didn't want to get up. Um, and go hunting for one right in the middle of the video. But your fingers work just as well, but obviously you're not going to have as much control. And try not, I've been really trying not to press too hard. Um, just if you need to get a darker, a darker push on your pencil and it's not working, um, then just go back over it. But because if obviously you push hard, you're going to make an indentation on your paper and because pencils, the color pencils are waxy. You're gonna hurt, put, hurt your paper and it's just gonna wax it up. So instead, I recommend just going over the lines more than once instead of pressing hard. Because also you're going to break your pencil and then have to keep sharpening it and waste your pencil, like I do. But you know, some of us have underlying anger issues and we just have to press your pencil really hard. I try not to. I've been really trying not to, but I get into it and I forget. So I'm going to go in and push the details on his hands. I think the hands came out really good. I'm proud of those. Sometimes, sometimes I can, I do really well with hands and then other days I'm like, how do, how do this? I don't know. Does everybody else get like that? I mean, I think everybody has their good and their bad days, but some days I'm like, yeah, go me with the hands. And then other days I'm like, 
how do I draw this? How even? I hate those days that you get where, like, you want to draw something and then everything that you draw is, like, coming out, like, it looks like you're trying to draw it with your foot or with your nose. Be like, I know how to draw. Why is this coming out like utter poop? I don't know. I, I really dislike those days. Oh, this is really fun. I liked, I figured out, um, I've been drawing a lot of dudes with like beards lately. And I, it's for whatever reason, it's become my favorite part. Probably because of the texture effect. But I went and I laid a light wash of watercolor down for his beard. But then I go back over and I build on top of it more with the actual colored pencil and then that creates a way much more desired effect which is cool because you know obviously we know by now that I enjoy textures if you don't like textures then that's completely cool I'm using the colored pencils because I do like the texture and it's making you know my outlines not be so bold and take away kind of from all of the watercolor texture like in my opinion I feel for this particular style that helps it go together so it's you know it's working it's tying together it's the, it's working together instead of working against it if that's the style you're going for like when i painted mad max and furiosa i wanted it to look dirty and gritty and grungy and bold and that's the look i was going for or if you're doing something more comic book-esque but this i wanted to be illustrative and stylized so that's why i went in with that and did it that way but I do obviously you've seen I work with with brush pens and I work with colored pens and that's why I did the variations I did variations so I could see you know how it looked with colored pens or not colored pens and then I've tried outlining in just my watercolors or just you know um, inking and it's you know, it's just, it's just a testing thing. And I've just found that I enjoyed lining with the colored pencils more than I did the pens and how everything works. But that's why you want to, excuse me, that's why you want to try different things. I'm going back in with that green and outlining stamp. It doesn't, it's not so dark, so it doesn't work as the perfect outline. But it is good to touch it up a little bit and re-add that green. I used the dark blue that I went and used on his jeans to pop the pupil and the iris and make it dark and smudge and smush, 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 smush. And then use the blue to outline Sam in the veins once more again because you don't want to use black for that. You want to. We've used a whole lot of bright, fun colors this whole time. So we want to stick to that and continue the trend. And yeah and then use the little skitter scat. I do use the black, obviously, for the darkest dark in the eye, the iris, because, I mean, I could have left it dark blue, and I don't think I pressed too hard, but yeah. Color pencils are good for layering and blending that too. This, I outlined the little kablammy explosion with the original green that I started the sketch with, kind of because I, I saw how um, it was showing through my watercolors, and I liked that, and it was a little ballsy of me to go back over and outline it um, a little more darkly, but it, it, it ended up matching everything still, which I'm glad um, that it did, because I liked the look that I got of the green showing through. So it kind of, so the yellow does, there's not really any yellow anywhere else in the piece, but behind them, but because I outlined it in the green, and there is green in the rest of the piece, it kind of made it so it worked together. And there we go back into the whole unification process and what have you. But it's trial and error. I mean, honestly, thinking about it right now, I would have been thinking a little more thoroughly. Oh my gosh, why would I outline that in green? The only place in the piece that's green is on Sam. But really the only place on the piece that's orange and yellow is the background. But to top things off, I finally, I go back in and I line it with the Jelly Roll Sakura white gel pen, which I am definitely going to replace because it is not my good friend anymore. We are not good friends. It does whatever it wants when it wants, and it is kind of just, it's kind of being a butthead. But I go over and I outline anything to show that something is in front of something else. So like the piece of his jeans, Jack's in front of the background. It makes him pop a little more or shine on his shoelace or shine on his sneaker or anywhere else 
And then once again, that test strip is helpful because with any colored pen or whatever you're using, I use it for colored pencils too, to see how the color is gonna look on the other color that I've already laid down that's clearly already on my painting. It's good because the gel pens or whatever kind of, it doesn't matter even if you're using the one I'm using right now, even if you have a good one, typically the jelly roll, the lines, they'll get like, the ball of the pen gets like logged up and it smushes or sometimes it kind of just, you know, it gets backlogged and it doesn't work. You have to get it rolling again to get a nice loose consistency or it'll get overloaded. So you gotta make sure that you always have that thing. The test strip is one of your best friends. And then here I realized that I forgot to draw the other lace for his sweater. What? Don't worry about it. Bam, 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 swoop, swap, swoop, swap. That was there the whole time. I don't know what you guys are talking about. That was there the whole time. Moving on. And Jack is completely free of the background now. So he pops more because he is outlined from the background so we can see him better. Yay! And then I put a shine in his eye. And then usually I put a shine on like the lips, but you don't, he's a guy. So, um, I mean, I don't wanna say anything that's gonna incriminate me, but typically if you put a shine on the lips, it's gonna make him look incredibly feminine <laughs> so just like if you put lines on a woman's face it makes or even anybody's face it makes them look older so the least amount of lines the least is the best you want put a shine on Sam and then put little spot blots, blots on her and kaboom we're done that's it ta-da I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you guys enjoyed my blabbering on my process I don't want to make anything that is you know a duplicate i know i made more or less a video on how i watercolored and then on my meet the artist video i did it on you know how i drew and then how i did the watercolor to completion but this is way more in thorough in thorough a way more thorough you know walk through than that was i don't want to do the same kind of thing anymore i'm going to keep trying to show different things and different processes along the way so you guys don't get bored. But I hope you enjoyed it. Jack, if you ever see this, thank you so much for your awesome videos. If you guys haven't seen Jack's channel, I highly recommend you go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. He's a whole lot of fun. Uh, and he makes my day, he makes my brother's day, and he's just tons of fun and inspiring and just, ah, I'm gonna stop geeking out now. But thank you guys so much for watching once more. If you have a sort of video that you would like to see from me, please let me know. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.